So today we're gonna attempt to paint this door and this fender with this tiny six gallon Craftsman pancake compressor. Utilizing a very mini mini Astro HVLP paint gun. And what's going on guys, this is Brian from Paint Society and today we're going uncut because I don't know how this project's going to go down. Let's take a look at a couple things that we have. Now we have that paint gun, now look how small it is, it's about the same size as an iPhone 10. Uh, I went ahead and picked up just an air filter um, and then we have an air regulator. Now of course this is a gun, uh, we just unwrapped it, it's a 1.2 but it also comes in a um, 1.0 tip and a 0.8 tip as well. So someone made a comment a long time ago, can I paint my car using a pancake compressor? Well, my first response was absolutely not. But then I got thinking, can you? Let's find out right now. So this is a compressor once again that we'll be using now. I will recommend if you're gonna use it, pull it out a little bit more. That way it has enough air space around it to uh, suck nice clean air in. Now this hose wraps right around. And well, it's connected to this hose reel that I use in the garage for just basic things like filling bicycle tires or even car tires. And as for your air filtration system, while you're looking at it, we're really going bare bones on this project. Now let's go ahead and put it all together. But first things, do not use any of this thread tape. Now this thread tape can disintegrate in the threads and come right out through your paint job. So it's not needed when putting these together. You're always going to want to run the regulator right before the gun. That way you're getting as true pressure as possible. Then from there you can put your inline filter and just hand tight is good enough. At this point we are ready to start spraying. And if the project doesn't go well we have backups on standby. And as for our project, well we have our project on a Civic here and we had some clear coat that was just completely faded here around the door edges. Now you might remember when we did our fender. Well, we did that with rattle cans and I got to say the color was a little bit off. So we're going to take the opportunity here to extend our job a little bit to see how well that pancake compressor will work. And kicking off this project, I started it just like any other paint job. I went ahead and covered up all of my primered areas. And although there was not as much airflow as I wanted, it was still delivering paint through the gun and onto the panel. So Things were a little bit promising here. I felt like we might have an advantage of actually overcoming a six gallon compressor paint job. Now, we're moving on to the fender. Since the fender was just a little bit lighter, we're gonna give the whole thing uh, nice coverage. And here I'm gonna go ahead and share my thoughts of what I thought about and what compensations you can make uh, if you have low pressure. So that first coat went down and well, since the compressor is really trying to keep up, your regulator is going to fluctuate so many times you have to stop and move. Now one thing I also noticed is that the paint's coming out really, really wet uh, because it just doesn't have enough uh, pressure to atomize it. So I had to go ahead and dial in my fluid a little bit. That way less paint is coming out. That way the air can kind of have a better chance of breaking it up uh, since there's a lot less paint running through the actual gun. The uh, more you back this up, the more paint, it just can't keep up. Another thing I would probably recommend is getting the 0.8. That's going to help out with atomizing as well. Although the 1.2 would probably do better in a booth-like situation with a real compressor, I feel that the 0.8 might be better for the home garage. And moving on 10 minutes to our second coat of base, just trying to find a higher pressure to atomize that base a little bit. There's no magic pressure here when you have a 6-gallon compressor. You're just trying to keep on compensating it, you know, checking the fan to make sure that, you know, the paint's coming out decent. You have a, probably about a five inch fan there. I'm sure it'd be much bigger with a, um, a more amount of airflow coming through. But yeah, like I was saying, uh, we're just doing the same thing here. We're going over the whole fender and I'm gonna try to treat it like a regular paint job now and try to have even strokes as possible. Uh, with base coat, I could do long strokes like this, but uh, you know, once I get into clear, it might be a different story. I might have to keep it um, much, much tighter. But you know, the paint's going on on the panel, and it's looking good. I checked it over with my Astro Sunlight, and it's a little bit light here on the edges. It's a good way to make sure you have good coverage because sometimes you can't tell until you get it out in the sun when it's too late. So I went ahead and just dusted on some more paint. Uh, you know, the less paint, the better. You don't want to pile up those coats. The more coats, you get sand piling, which is a coarseness of the base coat. Now to clean out our gun, we don't need to clean it out in between base coats, but in between base coat and clear, obviously we do need to clean it out. And I like to get 
most of the paint up just using like a uh, shop towel or something. That way we're saving on material, not making a bigger mess than what it is. Then from there we can use some Naked Gun spray gun cleaner and this makes it a lot easier and a lot less mess. And our cup's all tidy. It's very important that we get this clean uh, so that when our clear coat does not mix with it. Now for our actual gun body we can just spray it out and we don't need to actually break it down although it's not a bad idea but we don't need to break it down until um, we're all done with the job. We can soak it in lacquer thinner at that point. But this is good because it really bursts a good amount of uh, cleaner in there and it helps uh, get all the moving parts inside nice and clean. And so it's all good and clean. Give it a quick wipe down and now it's ready for our clear coat. And it's so important to allow your base coat to really dry. This is about 30 minutes after and see how beautiful and sheen it looks. It's got like a slight gloss to it but it's still flat. Nice and smooth. This is ready for our clear coat application. But the real test is really clear coat. How is that clear coat going to go on? You know, you can get away with base, maybe not spraying or atomizing perfect, but clear coat, if it does not atomize, meaning if it does not break up that clear, when it hits the panel, it's going to be orange peely finish. Now, my best way I think around this is to work small areas to keep a wet edge. The fan pattern isn't humongous. I've only got maybe five inches of fan. And I think that's due to the compressor not giving enough air. I want to take this gun into the booth at another time and really test it out. But for now, what we're working on is getting this nice and glossy. So we're going to mix up some clear and uh, see how shiny we can get her. And we're using our Tamco products. We're going with our 30 minute high speed impact clear. This stuff tightens up pretty quick. And that's just what we want in the garage to make sure that we don't have any dust or debris falling into it while it's still drying. And starting off with that clear coat stage, our main focus is keeping a wet edge. Now, a traditional method would be spraying from edge to edge of each panel, but we just don't have that amount of air. Now, we're well aware that our clear coat is not going on beautifully, but a good painter realizes that the real paint job is made in the second coat of clear. So we're sticking with a 75% overlap and carrying the wet edge from the front of the fender all the way to the edge of the door making sure that we watch the paint on, making sure that we don't have any dry spots. We're almost spraying like with an airbrush type system. Now moving along, the air will fluctuate, so it's very important to check your air gauge and make those changes as necessary so that your paint does not come out as orange peely. Now, a reason why we have orange peel is mainly because low pressure. A low pressure doesn't break up that clear the way we want it to and when it hits the panel it resembles the texture of the outside of an orange. That's how it gets its name. So we're finishing up here with our first coat of clear. We're going to allow this to flash for three to five minutes since it is a speed clear and hit it up with our second coat. And after the first coat, well, it doesn't look amazing, but I'm okay with that. A little dull, a little textured. Well, when it comes to the second coat right now, we're going to be able to lay it on a little bit thicker. See, that first coat is kind of like glue. So the second coat is going to go on there and stick to it very, very well. And that means I can be a little bit more aggressive with laying down my paint, right? So I can extend now my uh, passes between 12 and 15 inches instead of the normal little 8 to 10 quadrants that I was working before. Now this way I can keep a nice wet edge and I don't have any dry spots along the way. I'm really happy with the way it's been looking and well though it does look a little foggy right now I can tell you that there was little to no overspray that was coming from this paint gun. It was a real joy and well, we want to keep overspray down in the garage and keep things nice and clean as we go so that's something to consider and just finishing up here with the last few passes uh, I've got to say, the gun has got the air it needs from the compressor, and I'm able to move, feeling a lot more comfortable on this coat. Dig in the results. Two coats is all you need for a high solids clear, and we don't need to do any more than that. We're going to check it out right now. So we just finished the second coat, and guys, I am stunned. I am stunned. I cannot believe this. I really got the hang of spraying it on the second coat. I mean, look at this. This looks really, really good. I mean, a little bit of peel, but consistent. I mean, I can even pop another coat on here if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it the way it is. I mean, it almost has that factory texture to it. Unbelievable. But the real test is, 
Let's let this sit for 30 minutes and set up and see if it dies back or if it still looks just as glossy. Okay, 30 minutes and counting. Carla's dad likes it. Looks good. <laughs> Actually, 17 minutes remaining. And it's just about dry. You can put your finger over it. We'll give it another 17 minutes and then we'll unmask it. But this stuff kicks pretty good and still holding a good gloss. Bueno. Bueno. <laughs> and that will make 30 minutes right there. Now, guys, let's take a look. It is completely dry. I've even brought a little piece of sandpaper just to show how dry it is. I mean, I mean, you can sand it. And it, and it, powder, it actually powders up. So, I mean, obviously it's still gonna cure, but uh, it's still got a good gloss, which is what I'm really about. So let's go ahead and unmask it. So I gotta say for a mini gun, it did the job. And since it didn't require a whole lot of air, the six gallon compressor worked good with it. Now there was a lot of compensation that I had to do within regulating the air, which is why I always suggest a compressor that is going to be big enough for the job. Now for a couple doors or two or three panels, I would say maybe a 30 gallon compressor can get you what you need, but keep in mind that compressor is going to be running and running. So if you can splurge for a much bigger compressor, your life's going to be that much easier. Now, as for the six gallon compressor paint job, it worked. A little bit of my experience helped it work, but anything is possible if you just put your mind to it and really watch the paint go on. For small, small projects, maybe a helmet, maybe one or two panels, I can see yourself getting away with this bare bones project. Hey guys, if you wanna support the channel and get some merch, go ahead and check out the link below. Also join me on Instagram, paint.society, a lot of great information over there. And until the next one guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just pain. Let's check it out.